We're back on shift inside the ambulance. Hello, Black Country! Hey! We're back! Go, 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 go. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Oh. Where about in your belly is a pain. Does it look bad to you? As they face more heart-pounding action... I can't chest all me. Clear! Everyone clear! clear. ..and more medical emergencies. All right. OK, we've got some good respiratory effort now. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Look at them now. Don't cry, darling. Oh, they didn't know if you know. Look at that! <coughs> There are some new faces. <laughs> Can I wear the team chains? Pretty please. And some old friends. I love you, Joanne Stevens. No, you don't. Yes, I do. My life has been positively dead without you. Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Can we come in and have a chat? No. Have you got a favourite teddy you want to take with you? I'm going to need to shave you. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. We'll need to call security for these pair. They've been nothing but trouble. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. And off we go. Into the wild blue yonder. This is my like first day back after 12 Cheers. off. So I'm on my fourth. So you're probably just feeling tired and I'm forget feeling like I don't even remember what we do. <laughs> just so you know, after today at 6.30 if we finish on time, I break up. I won't mention it again. I'm, I'm sure you will. If you could go anywhere on holiday right now, where would it be? I'll probably have to take off one of my bucket list. Somewhere like Tokyo or Australia mm. or Blackpool. <laughs> We're going to Lapland. Obviously, to go and see Santa. Santa has said he'd like to see us there. Oh, no. Sadly, Santa's not paying <coughs> for the trip. If only. If only. Thank you, sir. Sure, my sweetie. Regular crewmates, paramedic Carl Williams and technician Daz Roberts, have just dropped a patient at hospital when a new call comes in. New assignment. 58-year-old male with chest pain. It takes just 10 minutes to reach the patient's house. Yeah. The biggest house, with all the cars outside. Yeah. Where his daughter, Satvia, is waiting. Hiya. Hiya. Where are we going? She raised the alarm when her dad started suffering excruciating pain. Hello, young man. I'm Daz, this is Carl. Just call you... Chinder. Right, Chinder, what's been going on? Um, severe chest pain, actually, today. Really severe. It wasn't too bad yesterday or last night. I didn't take any notice. Everything can be good, probably, yeah, at something. But today's been severe. Whereabouts uh, is the pain? There. I'm getting hit both arms. Do you suffer with anything medically? Uh, diabetic. Um, I've had a heart attack. It's been a couple of years ago, but I've been, I've been in a couple of times after that with chest pain. The same type of pain? This is slightly severe. But same type, same yeah, place. Same type. Uh, I, before it was, a, it was more or less there, not in the arm, just top here. Um, but now it's I can feel it in both arms. Do you mind if we do some checks on you? Yeah. When we arrived on scene, it was obvious that Chinder was in a lot of pain, complaining of central chest pain, going down to both arms. He has got a history of a heart attack previously, and also family history of uh, heart problems. How bad is your pain from zero to no pain? Ten is the worst imaginable pain. Yeah, at the moment it's um, it's about an eight. 
About an eight. Okay. It was. Okay. Can I ask if you you could take your jumper off for me? Is that okay? Is that pain? Does it come in waves? Does yeah, it's it? Good. What kind of pain is it? It's a dog pain, but it's only in both arms. Okay. Is it more in your arms or your chest? It's equal. Equal. Okay. Your ECG at the moment looks fine. I'll keep monitoring you to see whether there's any changes in anything. Have you been diagnosed since your heart attack with angina? No. No. It was a blood clot. Right, yeah. They, uh, they, uh, they did an angio. Yeah, did, you, did they say you still got narrowing of your arteries? Yes, yes. they have. Okay, so therefore that, that can lead to something called angina. Okay, which is basically, it comes under the same umbrella as sort of heart attack, but it's something that people live with, normal lives, etc. What was you doing when this pain started this morning? Was you up and about, moving around? Just walking about, yeah. Okay, so you was actually yeah, actively no, moving. It's been for uh, a bit I haven't been able to walk too far. Okay, so the pain's come on more when you walk. Okay, so it does sound like you've got an exacerbation of a possible, what we call, stable angina. Open wide on your tongue. Daz gives Chinder GTN spray, which should help widen his arteries and relieve the pain in seconds. But it isn't having much effect. Right, because of the severity of the pain, the fact that we can't shift it with the drugs that are supposed to reduce it, um, I think that is definitely advisable for a trip to a &E. We couldn't be sure whether Chinder was having a cardiac event at that time, although his ECG didn't show any changes. And we had to get Chinder to a hospital so he could um, have blood tests and they could work out whether this was a heart attack or whether it would just be an angina episode. Right, we need you to sit on this bed for us, okay? Nice and easy. Fantastic, swing your legs up. Chinda's daughter, Jazz, is going with him to hospital. Has that paracetamol helped a little bit? Um, yeah, well, one, two, six. To a six? Got to a seven, yeah. Right, OK, so it's coming and going, isn't it? Yeah. That's how it was when you had your heart attack. Was it? Yeah, it, it took ages for it to happen. Right, OK. Chinda's showing all the same symptoms as when he had a heart attack before. So where's the pain mostly? Tinder. Does it hurt when you press? Does that hurt when I did that? Not that. That does. That does. And then it gets so kind of under the arm. And just tops of the arms. I am ready when you are, Carl. The hospital is three miles away, and Chinder's chest pain is not going away. Oh, God. It's getting worse. Does it hurt when you press there as well? If you take a big deep breath in there, that hurts it more. Yeah. Chinder's chest pain appears to have got worse during the journey to hospital. Here we go then, Chinder. Couple of little bumps. Here, cardiologists will run tests to find out if he has had another heart attack. So they're keeping our man Chinder in then overnight? Yes. From what you were saying, it sounded very much like um, a stable angina, which is getting worse. So, yeah, 
I mean, it's a good call to take him in, really. You can't take chances with things like that. Hopefully, he makes a full recovery. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Have you got the, like, the proper moustache wax? I have. I put some in this morning, but uh, it's uh, run out already. So oh, to... no. I think I've got quite a good shave this morning. Oh, you got a good one? Yeah, yeah. Nice and close. Yeah, yeah. Those ones in the defibrillator are rough, aren't they? They are hardcore. They when are. you shave their chest and you can literally hear it go... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> so what happens when you've got a rug on your chest and you've got chest pain? <laughs> It's a crisp spring morning in the West Midlands, and technician Holly Welsh and paramedic Matt Rodwell are on shift. Right, so we've got a job. An 83-year-old male with a headache who keeps forgetting everything. They're just minutes from the patient's home. His son-in-law, Ali, called for help. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. So That's no problem no, at, no, at all. No, no problem at all. Not here in the ambulance. We thought he might have a stroke. Or... OK. That's so fine. All right. Ali raised the alarm because he's concerned about his father-in-law. Hello, sir. Do you want to take a seat? What's your name? Henry. Henry. My name's Holly. And my colleague's Matt. Hello, Holly. Sit yourself down, yeah. Flower. So what's been going on today, then, Henry? Can I tell you the story? Of course no, you can. you carry on, mate. It's a terrible story, really. <coughs> <coughs> I went to Benidorm. Oh, very nice. For the night and come back again. OK, when was this? Yesterday. Yesterday, right. OK. I'm supposed to stay there a week. But you weren't feeling very well, so you no, came I back. I, did, I didn't know what was happening. And they came back home on me, I went, OK, yeah. no problems. But every now and again, I get such a, I don't know whether I'm coming or... Is it a bit of confusion that yeah, you just... Yeah, a bit of confusion more than anything else. OK. Me. Had anything happened while you were in Benidorm? No. To start it, what were you doing when it started? Well, what did it start? I said, um, where are we now? And I'm, I'm mighty to go to get the flight back to the UK. Yeah. And then uh, they said, oh, you've only just come. I said, no, I've been here three nights at a minimum. Right, OK. And I, I just was muddled, and they were very good to me, I tell you that. But uh, they didn't explain to me why, why I kept thinking I'd, I'd been there already a week. When we arrived at Henry's house, he was really quite confused. Um, and it was very difficult to understand what had actually happened when he'd been in Spain. Um, I'm not sure he knew himself, if I'm honest. Um, but we had to try to persevere to get an understanding of what he thought had happened. And have you had anything like this in the past? Never. OK. Is there anything that you're worried about at the moment other than what's just well, happened? The only thing is they took my daughter. OK. Has she passed away? Yes. When did that happen? Uh, four, four months ago. OK. I'm very sorry to hear that, no, Flower. No problem. Sorry. OK. Extremely hypertensive. OK. Do you normally have um, blood pressure problems at all? No. Do us a favour, matey. Can you just pop your hands down on... Pop your hand down onto your... That's it. There we go. And just chill. Pretend you're on a beach. Like <laughs> cigar, pina, pina colada in hand. Back in Benidorm. Hand. Yeah. <laughs> Back in Benidorm. <laughs> right, matey. Just stay nice and still for me for right. a second. Can I settle down a minute, please, first? Yeah. Of course you can. You can, you can. Just, you can just chill, mate. There ain't nothing to panic about. But what I can't understand is... What, how would I have, have I lost? Not lost. How have I gained three or four days? I'm not too sure how that's happened, to be honest, Flower. The only thing that I can think of is that potentially you might have had a mini stroke. Well, that's what I thought I'd had, small stroke. That's it. We can't rule that out at the moment, yeah. which is why it's best just to get it checked at the hospital. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah. Henry, do you have any carers that come and look after you, or are you nice and independent? We're independent, this is the trouble. 
Do you feel that you need support? I, I think I could do with somebody, but Ali isn't one of the body. Oh, okay. Your daughter used to she do everything. everything yeah. Okay. This is the problem. Yeah. And she never said bugger off. Okay. She just, she just went there and she says, I don't feel very well to her husband, Ali. And he says, oh, good answer, didn't she? You're riddled with cancer. Really? Three days, ago, it's gone. <gasps> Three days? Oh, yeah. Henry, I'm so sorry. Henry, that's all. It's a bloody real catastrophe. Or... Henry clearly suffered a massive personal trauma, which we thought might be contributing to his confusion. There's only so much we can do on the back of an ambulance, and therefore we took him to hospital for further tests. At least it's nice and sunny, though. <laughs> Not quite Benidorm weather, though. <laughs> A few little bumps on the way up, all right, Henry? Is it? Yeah. And what do you think? Has it lived up to expectations? Well, it's all right to clean. They've got the mud ponds in there. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, you're not in any pain at the moment, are no, you? No, no. I'm not even anxious now. Brilliant. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> How long were you married to your wife? A long time. A long time. <laughs> How did you meet her? I was in the RDF. Oh, OK. In Germany. Yeah. She's a German girl. Oh, wow. And uh, finished my time. Yeah. And I started to look right into it. And then, uh, next thing you know, we got like, I said, you want to come over and live over there? And she said, oh, yeah, I'd like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, lovely lady. Lovely girl. Just like a mother's daughter. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't get her on the table. She walked in there. She said, I said, what's the matter with you? She said, I'm going to die there. I said, oh. I don't talk for anything. Oh, she says, yeah, I am. They told me I've got three days. And I couldn't believe it. And I still can't believe it. I'm so sorry that's happened. It's a horrible thing, isn't it? Cancer is just vile. Oh, it's terrible, yeah. We're here now. This is making good, isn't it, though? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the same all-inclusive, no, but no. you still get free food. <laughs> <laughs> Meals provided. <coughs> just no alcohol, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. <laughs> Henry will be taken to hospital, where doctors will run tests to work out if he has had some kind of stroke. Henry was interesting then, wasn't he? Yeah, such a lovely chap. Really, really nice. Just a shame that, you know, that happened in a foreign country where he didn't have any friends or family around him, to be completely confused, not have a clue what was going on. But he, yes. did, he did the right thing coming home straight away, though. But I don't think he meant to. That's the thing. Like, no. <laughs> like, it's a blessing in disguise. Absolutely, yeah. He's had a really tough life the last few months. And yeah. Lost his daughter. And well, stuff. absolutely, yeah. I felt, I felt really sorry for him. I it? did. Back on shift, our 48-year-old ambulance technician, Daz Roberts. He used a hairdryer. And 28-year-old paramedic, Carl Williams. Yeah, blow dry my hair. Yeah. Really? Blow dry it upside down for extra volume. <laughs> yeah. It's already been a busy shift, and another call has come in. Oh, we have a job. Ross a female with abdo pain. Under investigation for gallstone or kidney stones. So she under investigation for both.
The alarm was raised by the patient's sister, Carla. Afternoon. Ah, where are we going? She's upstairs on the phone. Upstairs? Yeah. What's your name, dear? Paula. Paula, hi, I'm Daz. This is Carl. Hiya. Oh, yeah. So what's been going on today, then? I've had a bad cough, chest infection, for the last three weeks. I've been on antibiotics, steroids. Um, this pain runs from underneath my ribs, underneath back of shoulder blade. I found oh, my shoes on the phone, yeah. I was going to try and... I tried to get in the doctor's this morning, but I couldn't. She tried to bring some washing down, and I thought she fell twice. Oh. It just, like, seizes up. Where, okay. roughly? In between the back muscles. It literally starts from in between here. Right. Under that rib, into the back shoulder blades. OK. You haven't been vomiting or your bowels haven't changed at all? No. Is there anything that you can do that makes it um, less painful? I tried having paracetamol as well as the tramadol. She has been in the bath as well. Mm. Tried to use it in the bath. OK. Nothing worked for you so far? And how long have you had this pain for, this, this one that we're talking about? about? Three days. Four days I went to a doctor's Friday. I couldn't take no more pain, so my daughter took me up yesterday. Up the hospital yesterday? Our meeting Paula, she appeared to be in a bit of pain and distress. She'd been prescribed some um, decent pain relief, which didn't seem to be helping. Goldstones can be quite debilitating um, at the best of times, and Paula was quite clearly showing signs of this. Right. So the majority of the pain is this area? Yeah. yeah. OK, so I'll come to there last. Any pain where I'm pressing there? Anything there? No. No pain? No. No, and if I'm going to press around the painful area now, does it hurt where I press? A little bit, there. Slightly tender, it's not hurting her, okay. just tender. And again, does it return back to normal? Yep. Okay, if you want to cover yourself up. Just how painful gallstones can be is something Daz knows all about. Here's Daddy's gallbladder out, this one. Mmm. Through gallbladder. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, it doesn't happen to everyone. I had severe pancreatitis, named gallstones. Gallstones block my bowel ducts. <laughs> When I go to people complaining of gallstones or kidney stones, I can relate to their pain. Because a couple of years ago, I had gallstones and it put me in hospital for five months, nearly killing me. But ignoring these signs can uh, lead to uh, severe consequences if not treated properly. Target runs in the family now, because Janet's had her okay. and, and who's Janet? Janet? My sister. Uh, did he? You've got the... You've got the family history behind it. And um, how old are you? 40. Okay, so you're in your 40s, which is sort of the age it tends mm. to manifest itself. Um, sorry. Apart from her stomach pain, Paula appears in good health, but the crew don't want to leave her at home feeling so unwell. Has this got worse since yesterday? Yeah, the store says so she's got worse since. So come on, Paula. Let's take these off you. Yeah. Paula's agreed to let Carl and Daz take her to hospital so her pain can be investigated properly. Have a seat on there. Just take a seat there, put your seatbelt on for me. Say, hey, vous, see, vous play. Come and join us. Mm. Feeling sick at all? Well, it's just the pain between my shoulder. See if we can find out what's going on. I need to. If it's gradually getting worse as the days go on. The hospital is just two miles from Paula's home, and they arrive quickly. Uh, Paula, would you like a wheelchair? Are you sure? Stubborn. It's not an issue. OK. Oh, sit down again. Got up. Have a sit down. Let me go and get a chair. Yeah. Right, follow Dad. Come on, then. In A&E, Paula will be assessed to see if gallstones or kidney stones are causing the discomfort in her stomach. I 
I feel her pain. It's not nice. And hopefully they can find out what it is and get it done. I thought it was one of those, and over to Daz. <laughs> yeah, and over to me. <laughs> He's had it before, he knows what to do. Yeah, and I ignored it, because I got a good pain threshold, so. Well, that's silly, wasn't it? Well, in the long run, it shouldn't have, because it nearly killed me, but I'm still alive 18 months later. Yeah. Well, man, you used to work on the roads. You got sacked there. Today? Why? Yeah. Apparently, he was nicking stuff. Nicking things? Yeah. I know. I got back home from school one day, and all the signs were there. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cheese does a horse use to hide itself? Mascarpone. Way! <laughs> <laughs> What did the grape say when the elephant trod on him? I wouldn't imagine a lot. Nothing? He just let out a little whine. <laughs> this is getting worse. <laughs> It's just before 11 o'clock, and crewmates Darren Westwood and Jamie Busby have been called as backup for a rapid response unit. To a four year old that's vomited after medication. A rapid response unit is a single paramedic who can begin urgent treatment until an ambulance gets there. I've got a funny feeling this, this power's backing us up because basically he's unsure whether they can have something else, perhaps. The one with the cars, ain't it's on the bloody chance. This one here? Yeah, with the, the, all the cars. All the cars. Yeah. When they arrive, the patient's worried dad is waiting for them. Where are we? Upstairs. The paramedic at the scene, Chris Rushton, fills Darren and Jamie in on the little girl's condition. Uh, this young lady is Esme. Hello. Four years old. She's been ill at a high temperature. OK. Uh, for the last... Three days, so Wednesday evening, she's had diarrhea. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not drinking uh, very much. Uh, she's not eating at all. She's been throwing up today. It says that her tummy's hurting. Esme's turned around and said that it hurts to wee. Okay. Mum says that uh, she hasn't passed urine in about eight, eight, nine hours now. Yeah. How much have we drank over the day? That's what we've had. Okay. I was more concerned about the, the diarrhea. Yeah, the of virus. course, and the, yeah, the, the lack of fluid intake. Right. Yeah. Dehydration in young children can be serious if not dealt with quickly. They need to work out what's making Esme Jean so poorly, and the best place to do that is in hospital. How are we, darling? My name's Jamie. And that, that old man there is called Wes. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been explained to you that we're going to pop you up to the hospital to the doctors? Yeah? Should we pop all our bits off you? Yeah? And we'll take you downstairs to our ambulance and hook you back up afterwards. Does that sound okay? Yeah? Have you got a favourite teddy you want to take with you? Which one? This one. And what's her name? Um, you haven't got you haven't got a name for her? How about Ellie? Ellie the elephant. You still got that pain in your tummy? Whereabouts in your tummy? Can you point to where it is? Right in your belly button. Okay. Have you? Do you like Minnie Mouse? That one has my name on. Does it? Children around that age will actually compensate when they're quite poorly, so they'll present quite normal, and therefore it's hard to recognise the signs when they're seriously ill. Yeah, Does she sound a bit awesome. hoarse to you? Yeah. Yeah. How's her colour look? Pale. Pale. Are we ready to go? Yeah. Yeah? Are we bringing Ellie with us? Oh, we've, we've named it Ellie. Are you bringing Ellie? Come on now.
Let me help you. Yeah. Climb oh, up. my words. Oh, you like your puddings, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Hey? If you light your finger up again. There you go. Let's have a magic finger now. Oh! Because it's late and to keep Esme Jean calm, Jamie dims the ambulance. How are you feeling now? OK? Now, what's up? Your belly hurts. Do you think you're going to be sick? Yeah? No one likes back on things, makes my life easier. You still got that tummy pain? Yeah. Is it in the same spot? Right on your belly button. Right. So if mommy if mommy carries you, shall I carry Ellie and Nelly? In hospital, paediatric doctors will be able to quickly rehydrate Esme Jean, if that's what's causing her to feel so ill. She was a nice enough girl, Bester. I was convinced she was getting a chunder on the way in. You quick with the bowl, then. So I gave her a bowl, covered mum in an inco sheet just in case. <laughs> what are you thinking of? Just medication and vomiting and therefore can't get any more in. And really, it was diarrhea for three days. That was a more concern. Yep. It's snowing. So the ice cream man was out the other day. Anybody want a 99? Now I've got enough vanilla, I'm freezing it in my driveway. Oh, I feel like I need my sunglasses today. Yeah, sunglasses and woolly hat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Come on, bro, get the engine started and froze. Oh, mate. My hands are like blocks of ice. Do you know when you. How are you so warm? Clinical team mentor V. Hodgkins and paramedic Ollie Raven are heading back to base when a call comes in. OK, Ollie, we have got a category three. Yep. 86-year-old um, lady. It's care line, so she's breast dependent. Um, she's had a fall. Um, it says that she's on blood thinners. OK. Uh, I think it's shelter accommodation. 86-year-old Gwen has activated her alarm button, which triggered the 999 call. I'm always a lot more um, wary of these since, since uh, mother-in-law. Yeah. 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 Um, and Scary, really, isn't fell it? Fell from a footstool. A footstool, yeah. you know. I, I don't, I, half a footstool, I wouldn't even say it was a footstool. footstool. Yeah. And, uh, yep, changed her life forever. Yeah. Bleed on the brain, brain surgery, no longer lives independently, lives in a nursing home. Yeah. It's an exact example of why Ellsby Falls can be a lot more serious than, than, we, think. than we think. Yeah. Mm, someone's cleared and gritted oh, the car park as that. well. It's a bonus. Oh, that's a good bit of grit. Mmm, someone's done a good job. Thank you, it's the ambulance service. Hip, hip. Oh, Thank you. Hello, yes, my darling. Gwen was a hotel administrator. She was widowed seven years ago, and although her three children live nearby and visit regularly, she's used to coping alone. Her friend Iris has been waiting with her for the paramedics to arrive. Hello. It's just a matter of getting up. Are you a neighbour, are you? Yes. Hello. 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 Oh, right. I can't make me a cup of tea, don't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Gwen, my name's V. This is Ollie. 
So what height have you fallen from, from a stand? On the floor. I was on standing on the floor. I was you were standing on the floor? No, I dropped out the wall and went on the floor. I yeah. even got just still down there somewhere. OK, right. So how did you land? I just went back, so I dropped on my bum. Landed on your bottom? Oh, I'm going, I can't stop myself, so I landed on my bum. So you've landed on your bum? And then I just went back okay. to rest. OK, so and you haven't uh, banged your I head, you lay, so you lay, you lay yeah. back. Um, head injuries um, can be quite serious in the elderly. I've got own personal experience. My mother-in-law had a, um, a very small fall just over 12 months ago. It's been life-changing for her. Um, when we're dealing with Gwen, you know, or any elderly person, um, particularly people that are on blood thinners, it's important to make sure that they haven't banged the head. Um, just a simple fall can actually be hiding a significant brain injury. What we're going to do, we're going to just check you over, yeah? Mm. Top to bottom, do your blood pressure. Yeah? Yeah. And then we'll get you off the floor. Yeah. And then you can have that cup of tea. Sound like a plan? Mm. And I'll find okay. your nail as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll find your nail. You can just fall gone. It's not Gwen, it's Gwen, <laughs> Gwen, <laughs> Gwen, stop gas bagging for a second, all right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, OK? I just want to just check you over. I have to knock her out. I have to knock her out? She's always gas like bagging. this. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing wrong with gas bagging. No. Just, no, I'm just checking you ain't got any lumps or bumps first. I'm worried about your hairstyle. Looks beautiful. I just need to slide your sleeve up and do your blood pressure. Oh, yeah. All right. So did you go dizzy or anything, or you lost your footing? I don't know. I've gone before, like... You didn't go dizzy in your head, though? You don't remember going dizzy? No. No. OK. Just pop a finger in there for us as well. V and Ollie can't find any evidence that Gwen hit her head when she fell, but they want to get her on her feet to be sure. Can we... Shall we put your slippers on? That was on. That's come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can be our Cinderella look. No, yeah, Let's peel these one. off. I've got to. <laughs> Either side yep. and hold on to her elbows, yeah, I think. Yeah. We'd normally use a lifting cushion to pick a patient up off the floor, but the batteries failed on this occasion. Um, the weather was horrendous. It was dangerous for our colleagues to come out, so we made the decision um, to lift her. I'm going to push up on three. You can count. One, two, three. Gotcha. We got you. We won't let you fall. You did, you did, no, don't lose you did that yourself. Got, yeah. You don't normally do that kind of lifting because touching people's arms, putting pressure on them can actually cause bruising and further damage. You did that yourself. How are you feeling stood up, my darling? I'm all right, yes, okay. I'm fine. But we're actually happy that Gwen did a really good job of supporting herself and pulling herself up. Come and have a kick. Have a, we've got you. Just come and have a walk to you. I'm fine, are you? Iris, you're back in you. Good old, I liked Iris. It's a cup of tea time with Iris normally this time. Oh, How is that? It? Gwen seems to be OK, but there's one other vital task Ollie needs to carry out while he's here. Oh, you're going in search of the nail? What was it? The oh, nail. I found it. He's found right. it, he's found, found it. I found yeah. it, yes, there I found go. it. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. You don't feel nervous. No, no, because you've got no sort of cold callers, have you, or anything, you're all nice and secure. I don't feel unsafe. Yeah. No. She's been here four years. Four? Yeah. Oh, you've Is that OK? Yes, thank you. You've done a grand job there. Look at that. Yeah. While you've got Ollie, do you want anything else doing? Any other DIY you need doing? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> this is only the second time Gwen's ever had to trigger her panic button. Listen, I'm happy that you're OK after your fall, all right? Yes, I'm. And you don't need to go to hospital, OK? I just need to tell you a few bits of advice. I'm sure it won't happen. If you get a headache or you start vomiting, then you call us, OK? Yeah. Call 999. I'm sorry, I had a picture of That's yeah, all right. Yeah, that's all. Into, yeah, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll uh, let you have your afternoon cake with Iris then, OK? Mm. No falling over again today, all right? I hope no. <laughs> and get some smaller slippers as well. Yeah. All right, my sweetheart. Take care, Gwen. Okay, my all right, my Thank darling. You very much. You're welcome, sweet. I'll send Iris in. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Bye-bye, darling. Satisfied that Gwen has escaped injury and is well supported by friends and family, V and Ollie are happy to leave her at home. I love people, I love people like that, know, yeah. elderly when they're like that. Uh, yeah. She was very grateful for us as well, wasn't she? And very lucky. Really, given what we were saying about the job when we saw she's on blood thinners yeah, and potential head injury, it would have been awful to if she had a bumped head.
that yes, thus far she's my patient of the shift. Definitely. Chinder didn't have angina, he was in fact having a heart attack. He was kept in the cardiac ward for five days before being discharged to continue his recovery at home. The confusion that caused Henry to come home from holiday early was found not to have been brought on by a stroke. He was diagnosed with a bladder infection, prescribed antibiotics and discharged the same day. Paula underwent tests at hospital for her severe stomach pain. An ultrasound ruled out kidney stones, but she needed further tests for gallstones. She was prescribed morphine for the pain and had to take a month off work. It's not clear whether medication made little Esme Jean ill or something else. Once at hospital, doctors rehydrated her with intravenous fluids and gave her paracetamol to bring down her temperature. She was discharged after a few hours and sent home to rest. Gwen hadn't suffered any injuries in her fall. She was able to have afternoon tea with her neighbour Iris as originally planned. All in all, it's been not a bad day, has it really, mate? It's never a bad day working with you. It's never a bad day working with you. <laughs> We always have a good shift, don't we, to be fair? We do. 